As I'm sure you can tell by this point in the course, I really appreciate getting an historical perspective on any of these topics. So we'll say a few things here about early balloon flights. Early use of balloons actually goes back a long way. They would um, use balloons back in ancient China, not for flying, but they would launch a small balloon that was made of paper, maybe just a couple of feet across with a little tiny burner, a little tiny flame candle type thing underneath it that would float up into the air because of the heat provided from the candle. And um, it was used as a signal signaling device a long time ago. It wasn't until the early modern era in the Western world, in Europe, that balloons started to be used. And I think it was the early 1700s, a guy in Portugal demonstrated a balloon, a hot air balloon, lifting off of the ground a few feet. And then in the late 1700s, it was 1783 in France, a guy named Jean-Francois, that's J-E-A-N, Jean-Francois de Rosier, R-O-Z-I-E-R. -E he uh, did some early experiments with first with unmanned balloons and they would send them up with a small payload to verify that they could carry a certain weight. They would test them with putting some animals in there to make sure the animals were okay going up to higher altitudes and back down. And then with a tethered flight, that means the balloon was flying, but it was still attached to the ground with the rope, what they call a tether. And then a free flight, actually human flight in a balloon. And this was the first example. Here's a picture of his balloon. We don't have any photographs from this era because cameras didn't exist yet. But this is the balloon right here. And it doesn't have a basket underneath it. It has this uh, section underneath where people could walk around. Here's a, um, here's a picture of a model. And this, this is a model of his balloon. This is in a museum. But the people would stand down here in this area. So they might be standing here like this in the, in the balloon. Not in the basket, but in that section on the bottom. Here's a diagram from, from back at the time showing the device that he would use to tether the balloon to the ground. And there's a picture of de Rosier. And he actually died in a balloon accident along with uh, one of his friends. Here's a picture showing the people coming to uh, try to help him and his friend, but it's too late. The balloon crashed. And here's another piece of artwork depicting the same thing. Here's a picture of the balloon. It didn't really look quite like this. But here you see them running over here to try to, there's a person trying to help an injured person in the balloon and over here as well. And then this is a monument that was erected in their honor after the event. Even though they, they crashed and met their deaths that way, they were still pioneers in the field and were recognized as such. Aviation in general as well as um, maritime history is full of a tremendous amount of excitement but also a tremendous amount of risk and hazard involved. Here's a more recent example of a balloon accident. Nobody actually died in this one, actually. This balloon caught fire and landed in a campground and um, ruined a couple of RVs in the campground, set them on fire. But nobody, nobody died. There were some injuries, but there were no deaths either in the balloon or on the ground. And just looking at this, it seems pretty obvious that there was a problem with the fuel tank, not just the burner, but the tank itself. It looks like it's blown up. And you see a lot of damage to the balloon right there as well. So the hot air is leaking out and the balloon's coming down. But fortunately, there were no fatalities in that particular incident.